going with her in LA. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's see if I can oh do You know what? You know what? <laughs> We're going to go in the last one now, Jason. Yep. Yep. You know I'm what, everybody? To go. I'm about to. Yep. He usually gets us going at the top of the hour, but today he's closing us out. It is the Hyatt 9 head honcho, and I'm sure his delay today has nothing to do with someone's favorite ex president being kicked off the ballots left and right. <laughs> <laughs> It's the start of a banana Jason republic, Beck. you guys. What you got today? Don't worry, the Supreme Court will bring him back on. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. State cannabis regulators still one step behind questionable THC lab data, you guys. That's right. Despite widespread acknowledgement from cannabis industry observers that commercial testing laboratories across the country routinely inflate THC potential potency results. Get out of here. Consequences are rare, according to a review of recent state regulatory actions. I'm not buying that, but okay. Critics say the, the this demonstrates that the state regulators have been too slow to wrestle with the dubious THC potency results and other questionable data and behavior from state licensed medical marijuana labs, allowing the problem to grow worse. The, uh, the, the pervasive lab fraud problem in turn deals a serious blow to the $34 billion marijuana industry's credibility for cannabis consumers, lawmakers, and law enforcement. In quotes, it's truly a massive consumer fraud, said James McRae, a Washington-based data analyst who identified rampant cheating in that state's marijuana testing data as early as 2016. McRae's work led to increased scrutiny that culminated in Washington state regulators uh, revoking one cannabis lab's license back in 2020. But that's among only a handful of examples of state regulators catching cheating labs in the act and, me and, and meeting out punishment excuse me, metting out punishment, in quotes. There needs to be enforcement about this, and there needs to be consequences for being on the wrong side of it, McRae, owner of Seattle-based Straight Line Analytics, told MJ Biz Daily. State intervention, he said, it's crucial. So far, he added, it's also been sorely lacking. Uh, co complaints of lab shopping, a practice in which marijuana product manufacturers select private licensed labs for state uh, mandated potency and safety testing, have dodged legal cannabis markets for years. In October, Yasha Khan, a vice president at MCR Labs, a state licensed marijuana laboratory in Massachusetts, obtained and analyzed uh, anonymized data from testing labs in Maryland. Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, and Oregon. His analysis found that uh, labs routinely inflated THC levels by as much as, get ready, as much as 25% or more, they say. Khan also found signs that labs manipulated data to allow cannabis that, sh that should have failed for yeast or mold contamination to pass. Khan's analysis was only the latest warning from a uh, credentiated scientific observer or a licensed laboratory that that questionable testing results could be easily flagged using simple diagnostic tools. State regulations have at times taken serious action against labs uh, alleging to have inflated THC results or manipulated data to allow tainted products to be sold. Uh, prominent examples include Las Vegas, Canex, Nevada, aka Ludicet, and RSR analytical laboratories, which Nevada state regulators with a 10 year ban, um, uh, punished with a 10 year ban for potency inflation valuations during 2019. Washington based Praxis Laboratories, shut down in 2020 by the State Liquor and Cannabis Board, and Sacramento, California based Sequoia Analytical Lab, which surrendered its business license in 2018 after a state inspection found the laboratory director uh, faked results for nearly four months. Meanwhile, other uh, 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 allegedly suspected labs have managed to evade enforcement. A prominent example is Michigan-based Veritas Laboratories, which responded to a state uh, cannabis regulatory agency recall with litigation that's still ongoing. More recently, states have launched or uh, announced intentions to begin stepped-up enforcement, but uh, results have been negligible.
In mid-September, California cannabis regulators uh, issued a long-anticipated warning to state-licensed uh, marijuana businesses and random tests of marijuana products pulled from retail shelves should, uh, would soon begin. In the Department of Cannabis Control, the DCC wrote in a message sent to all licenses back on September 15th, if the results for THC percentage and contamination returned from a state laboratory didn't match the results certified by the commercial marijuana laboratories and printed on the label, the products could be recalled and the offering lab punished. Some uh, can cannabis laboratories welcome the DCC's move as long overdue attempt to wrestle with uh, what, what's become known as a widespread and in some views a worsening problem, unreliable lab testing results, including lab uh, labs bending the market pressures and boosting clients' THC potency to attract business. But after more than three months, California officials have not identified any products pulled from store shelves, nor has any punishment been met out to any labs as a result of the DCC investigation. In Oregon, random off-the-shelf testing won't begin until 2024, and uh, that's in part because the Oregon legislature last summer uh, approve the transfer of 2.2 million in marijuana license revenue to the state department of agriculture to pay for um, reviewing private lab testing results in california legislators are still uh, ongoing dcc spokesperson david hefner told mj biz bailey and uh, such probes are complicated in part because the initial results of these investigations have moved the department to widen its scope, Hafner added. California regulated adult use uh, market opened back in 2018, but wasn't until five years later that the state's regulators imposed a standardized cannabinoid testing method for all labs to use. Meanwhile, Massachusetts regulators sent a bulletin last month to all state testing laboratories instructing them to report THC percentages via standardized formulization. And the Cannabis Control Commission continues to conduct routine inspections of all marijuana establishments, including independent testing laboratories, to ensure compliance on agency. Uh, uh, to ensure compliance, an agency spokesperson toward MJ Biz, MJ Biz Daily via an email response to questions and, in quotes, a plan of correction is required if, if deficiencies are identified, the spokesperson added. Massachusetts cannabis testing landscape will continue to evolve as the regulated industry matures. To date, the agency has not reported penalizing marijuana laboratories or alleged or proven THC potency inflation and in state uh, regulators defense job sh uh, lab shopping and potency manipulation was simply not a widely foreseen problem in the early days of marijuana legalization why wouldn't you see that and government regulators will rarely move with the, with a speed of private or for-profit actors and in quotes the encouraging or positive way to look at this is that one is, is that is one of those classic cases of laboratories of democracy said Jeff Ross founder of Massachusetts Space Institute of Cannabis Science and a critic of lax enforcement on questionable lab data. Different states try different regulations and see what works best, he added. From that perspective, I feel like the shortcomings can, be, can present different ideas. But above all, the states have to enforce their own rules, said Roger Brown, the president and co-founder of Florida-based ACS Laboratory, which claims to be the largest CBD hemp testing lab in the eastern United States and is licensed by the United States Drug Enforcement Administration. Well, well, and well. What do you guys think about this? Lots of lab shopping going on. It's coming up to be Black Friday pretty soon, and I wonder if all these labs are going to be having a sale on THC percentages. But nonetheless, this is Jason Beck for the High at Nine News. What do you all think about this? Real quick here, Jason. <laughs> uh, a couple things. Uh, number one, Black Friday already happened. <laughs> number two. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Oh, it is, uh, very, it's, it's very suspect that we haven't heard any of these uh, lab shopping stories much this year at all after hearing nothing but mm -hmm. lab shopping stories last year. But number three, I like to give um, a big shout out to Veritas Labs. Uh, I know MJ Biz, whoever wrote this story, called them out as a quote unquote suspect lab. That Michigan's regulatory body is very suspect. And we covered that story. Yeah, we they are. To them, uh, 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 They're still hiding forty million to bucks. Lab CEO and all that, and the entire board that was uh, doing their regulation, they've all been quietly fired, and they sued the state because they did not find any wrongdoing, uh, because they actually were uh, uh, receiving like a high uh, test results 
double test, triple test, and there was nothing wrong with their testing system, but their uh, case was thrown out by the Michigan Supreme Court because they said that cannabis is federally illegal. Therefore, you cannot sue. Mm. <laughs> Even though they lost oh, upwards of two hundred yeah. million dollars with that recall le that led to them, so uh, I had to make sure that we uh, we, we said that about Veritas Labs. MJ Biz needs to, needs to check that, yeah. calling them out. They will get sued by Veritas Labs for calling them a suspect lab. Suspects. Yeah. yeah, I mean, lab testing has been a joke for years and years and years. And I mean, some some states are slightly better, but I'm when you know we were in Oklahoma, they didn't even have requirements for sample selection it could be done by somebody in your grow it could there's no literally not a single rule about how you select a sample what you send to the lab um and yeah if you're if you're a big operator and you're you're blasting samples all day and every day like they're they're gonna do whatever they can within their guidelines of testing to give you the highest results possible if there's a window of thc that they have they're gonna give you the highest one they're gonna do what they can to to make sure your stuff passes because if not you'll just go to another lab and like that's that's the unfortunate i think in, I inherent they, they flaw that comes with like for, for profit it yeah, was it wasn't the dea supposed to be like giving a quote-unquote certifications to labs by the end of this year whatever happened to that no no that, that was yeah, that, I, that's I for hemp lab, that, that that's for hemp labs that's not that's not cannabis derived i just listen yeah. i got i got two things before we before we go is one is it makes it really hard for fair play when somebody is using a legitimate lab because they really care about the product that they're putting out to their consumer and they have to battle against these fake labs that are doing these inflated THC numbers and all that stuff. It makes it really difficult. I really think they need to figure that out of how to weed out the bad actors. And two, it d does nothing but continues to propagate the THC myth. The t there is, listen, let me tell the people this. THC percentage is not how you judge the quality of cannabis, okay? I will show you something that is 25% and show you something that is 36%, and the 25% will crush it in every metric that you can measure. So it's smoking-wise. I'm talking about not your lab metrics, your smoke, your smell, your taste, your feel, your effects, all those things, right? So. We have to we have to get away from thinking this whole THC percentage thing is even important because although it's part of the metric, it is not what is how you should judge cannabis. And we're, we're, I think we're starting to see consumers get away from that. So hopefully they get this lab situation figured out. It, it, we have to even the playing field so that all of the lab results are legitimate and the consumer knows what they're getting because that's important. It's important yeah. for us as an industry, for the consumer to know exactly what those lab results are, that they're accurate, they're getting what they're paying for, and um, and just the THC percentage. Let's get let's stop let's stop even talking about that as being a quality indicator.